in just over 1 million years, something terrified and kind of beautiful will happen. Something that only happen in science fiction movies. A star will likely to pass through our solar system. This is Gliese 710. It's an orange star slightly smaller than our sun and is currently located around 60 light years away from us. But not for long. In 1.29 million years, the star will just pass 0.16 light years away from our sun, comparing that to the current closest star to us, which is 4.2 light years away. This is nearly scarily close. In fact, it will be so close that it will appear as a bright in our sky as Venus and Jupiter. This is so close that it has an 86% chance of actually passing through the Oort cloud. The Oort cloud is just this huge pair of icy rock that surrounded our solar system and at this distance it could seriously impact some of the objects in the Kepler belt like Pluto could be impacted. Astronomers have predicted that this could result in something known as comet train sending showers of comets into the inner solar system for millions of years. Now we are going really far into the future. In 225 million years from now, we will finally have completed one full orbit of our Milky Way galaxy. This is known as a galactic year. Despite the fact that we are orbiting pretty quickly at 230 kilometers per second, it still takes us 225 million Earth years to complete one full orbit. Since our planet formed, Earth has completed this trip 20 times already, but never with the humans on board. But we don't orbit in a nice flat plane like this. We are actually traveling more like this, tilted on a 60 degree angle. Every single year, Moon moves 1.5 inches away from the Earth. This is because of tidal interaction with the Earth. The Moon's gravitational pull creates these bulges on, on either side of the Earth. But because Earth rotates in the same direction as the Moon orbits, the plunge causes the Moon to speed up ever so slightly, causing it to slowly get further and further away. While almost 2 inches doesn't sound a lot, but over a million years, it adds up. In 650 million years, this will have two huge effects. A day on Earth will last 24 hours, 18 minutes due to Earth's rotation slowly slowing down as a result of Moon moving further. And more importantly, the last ever total solar eclipse will happen. Because of this point, the Moon will no longer be big enough in the sky to eclipse the Sun completely. Currently, the Moon is 400 times closer to the Earth than the Sun and it just so happened to be 400 times smaller. This means that we get to see these beautiful total solar eclipse as the moon is just the right size to block out the light from the sun perfectly. But eventually, the moon will be just too small because it moved away from us and we will no longer be able to see eclipse like this. Sahara, a place you probably picture something like this dry, hot, barren, hell on earth. But did you know one day it will look like this? A vast grassland filled with life. It happened many times before and it will happen again soon. For hundreds of thousands of years, this area on the African continent has alternated between desert and tropical savanna on a roughly 20,000 year cycle. This is caused by the precession of Earth axis every 26,000 years as it moves and wobbles its way around the Sun. It reached its present day desert conditions around 1,100 years ago after slowly drying out across around 6,000 years. In around 30,000 years, Earth will wobble once again, flip, leading to the Sahara Desert becoming green once more. In one and a half billion years, something truly freaky will happen. The tectonic plates that are responsible for creating the vast mountain ranges around the world, earthquakes, 
volcanic eruptions and the creation of new land, those tectonic plates will stop moving. It's actually true. Eventually, the mantle of the Earth will have cooled so much, preventing the tectonic plates from drifting anymore, and the effect will be horrifying. The carbon cycle completely stops, affecting life on Earth. The continents no longer move, preventing new continents from forming. The wind and weather slowly rot in the mountains here on Earth over millions of years, leaving their remaining land extremely flat. This could even result in the Earth being reverted to an ocean world over time, the entire planet covered in a cold ocean. A side effect of climate change that we don't often hear about is the edification of our ocean. The ocean absorbed 30% of the carbon dioxide released into our atmosphere. This CO2 is absorbed by the seawater, leading to an increased concentration of hydrogen ions, making the seawater more acidic. This actually causes corals to be unable to maintain their skeleton, impacting their growth and strength. This is one of the leading causes of slowly dying reefs that we have today. Around the world, particularly in Australia, Great Barrier Reef and what is awful is actually takes more than 2 million years of these corals and other marine organisms to recover from the ocean edification caused by humans. 200 of years are action resulting in 2 million years of destruction for the reefs. For thousands of years our ancestors will look to the star with wonder telling stories of what they see. Orion the hunter the Big Deeper, the Southern Cross. These constellations have guided humans for thousands of years, even helping them navigate across the vast ocean late at night. But uh, in 5 million years, none of these constellations we see today will have survived. When you are outside at the night watching the stars, it's easy to think that these stars are just fixed in one place, never changing. But of course, this is not true. They are actually moving through space at hundreds of kilometers per second, just like our sun. Since 2014, the European Space Agency Gaia mission has been tracking the position of the stars in the Milky Way with greater accuracy than ever before. And using this data, they created this real video showing how stars in our sky will move over the 5 million years. Constellation will wander, leaving our stories in the past, the Big Deeper and Orion the Hunter left as distant memories. This asteroid named Binu is currently ranked as the highest potential risk for a serious collision with Earth and it's headed for us right now. NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory actually tracks the entire asteroid catalog. We had to access whether there are any risk of collisions. The program currently ranked Pinu right at the top with a 1 in 750 chances of it hitting Earth on September 24th, 2182. Astronomer even found that there is actually a 30 years window where our orbits are so intertwined that there are 8 separate occasions where a collision could occur. At its closest approach, Ben will be just 750,000 kilometers above the Earth's surface. This is roughly twice as far as the Moon. Now, if this impact does occur, the collision will have the kinetic energy of 1200 megatons of TNT. Now, for the comparison, the TSAR bomb, the biggest nuclear weapon ever detonated on Earth, was around 52 megatons, meaning Bennu would strike the Earth with the power of 22 TSAR bombs. In preparation, scientists have actually been studying Bennu in details for decades now. The osiris Rex mission was sent to Bennu asteroid and bring some rock back to Earth. It's launched on the Space 8, 2016, successfully collected a sample as you can see here, and then touched down back on Earth just last year. The contents of the example are currently being studied, so we don't know too much. 